What's the difference between a chess master and a chess grandmaster? I'm a chess master, my online rating is 2300 and I could beat 99.8% of players. My friend Danya is a chess grandmaster, his online rating is 3100 and he can beat 99.9% .9 of players. But if we were going to go heads up, he would win 99% of the time. I know this is kind of confusing, so today we're gonna to be solving the same chess positions so you can see the difference in how we think. And we're gonna flip the board. It's black to play here as well. A lot of black to moves today, no particular reason why. And we don't have the evaluation, so we don't know if we're trying to win or draw, which makes it harder, but also makes it more fun. Oh, for sure. So yeah, it was so much fun. You sound like my chess coach. It's <laughs> Let's more have some work. fun. <laughs> yeah, which it's means more it's work. Fun. You're gonna love it. <laughs> it's fun time. Yeah, black to play. Okay. All right. I'm gonna start the timer. I think I got it. I mean, sorry, good job. <laughs> Want a medal? <laughs> now let me think. Yeah, congrats, congrats. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> All right, time is up. Okay. All Enlighten right. me. So, I'm going to start once again generally. What do you notice about this position? We are down a bishop, but what we do have going for us is that this pawn is close to promoting, and our rook and queen are cornering the white king. Also, I don't see any instant checkmates for white, even though our king is out in the open. So, that's a decent start. Are we supposed to be winning this? Are we supposed to be drawing it? I would be happy with a draw being down this much material. Um, but of course, it's an aggressive position, so I was trying to look at tactics. The move that I liked the most was queen e3. I tried to look at rook takes g2, but I, I didn't see anything after you just give a queen for free. I tried to look if there was any difference between queen e3, queen e5, putting pressure on the bishop. Queen e3 seemed to be a little bit better because it was closer to the king. I tried to see if... I play a move like queen e3, are there any threats I need to be worried about? But all of the checks on b7 or a7 seems like I could just, uh, sorry, a7 is a free queen. b7 for white, I could just run away to h6, so that seems okay. But my issue with um, queen e3 is after bishop d1, I couldn't really see a continuation. Queen e1 looks good if rook takes and you trade off. Actually, I'll play it on the board so it's easier to see. I was looking at queen e3, bishop d1, queen e1. Obviously, white is not going to take the queen because then you are better off, but white can just kind of sit on this position, and I didn't know how to progress from here. So I just kept running through multiple lines. This is the one I, I, I like the best, but I just didn't have enough time to see it all the way through. Yeah, and we can totally, like, in the future, adjust the thinking time and, and do more time. Like, I wouldn't mind that at all. Um, so I started with some of the same considerations, which is that black is down a piece, Within a couple of moments, I determined for myself that probably black is trying to draw. Just mm -hmm. because, like, in order to win this, you're going to have to either somehow checkmate on g2, and it seemed pretty clear that there's no way to do that. I mean, d1, bishop takes d1. There's no way to distract the rook. My next candidate move was also queen e3, and I got stumped after bishop d1 similarly. Because, again, I think thinking in, like, hypothetical ideal scenarios is really good here. Like, if everything goes right for black, how would we win? And I didn't even see an idealized version of this. Like if white just sits, yeah. oh, no, white's not gonna sit. White's gonna go like queen d6 and stuff. Yeah. And it just seemed, this just seemed too muddy for me. And it seemed pretty certain that white was going to somehow consolidate. Yep. Like queen d3, etc. like you were saying. So then I was like, okay, what am I missing? Are there any ideas that I might be closing myself off to? And that's kind of when I spotted the correct, what I think is the correct move. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna say anything for sure. I look at black's, Rook, Queen, and Pawn, and I noticed that all of them can be given away basically on demand. So I came up with like a stalemate idea. And a stalemate construction would be the Black King on h6, the White Rook on g2, and the White Bishop controlling the King's only escape square down the h-file. Wow. So that's when I came oh up God, with you play queen a move. Did I play what? Queen g3? Well, Queen's already on g3. Uh, no. I see the Bishop on d1. Oh, you mean in this position? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I thought oh. in the initial position... Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, that makes sense. In the initial position, at first I thought about rook takes g2, rook takes g2, d1 queen, bishop d1, and king h6. Mm -hmm. And this is stalemate, but, I mean, obviously white doesn't have to take the queen. 
Yeah. So I was thinking like, okay, queen f1, and I actually didn't see a way to force stalemate here. Right, because if because... you take the rook, uh, you take back with the king, and you don't have to take with the queen. Makes sense. Right, but queen h3, rook h2, I think is important. I thought it was this at first, because king g1, queen h1 is a stalemate. But here there's the funny rook h2, and it's actually a pin against the king. Yeah, damn. And you cannot take. But then I thought, what if you change the move order? You don't have to give away your pieces immediately. After king h6. king h6. Yeah. Exactly. White has no checks. And I wasn't totally sure, but I didn't see a way for white to prevent. There are some like crazy lines here. I think queen d3 might be the most testing uh, response. And here there's a ridiculous idea. I think you can still promote. <laughs> okay. So I'll let you find the move after queen takes d1 or the sequence. What's the most clinical way to force stalemate? Um, it looks, well, for a second. Oh, okay. Queen takes h3. Nice. She takes and then rook h2. And I'll play it on the board as well for chat. So you take here. It's forced. You have another force check. King takes, and now black has no moves. Exactly. Stalemate. Oh, that's sneaky. But then I got discouraged by queen takes g3, and even though the king is stalemated, it takes a second to actually figure out the way to give away your pieces. Do you see? Let I think me, this is the only way. Let me think. Okay, because queen takes g2 looks like the easiest, but after king takes g2, you play rook f1, and then the bishop can take. Right. Um, but you could also take on g2. Nice. And if white doesn't take? <laughs> um, yeah, so queen takes, king has to take. If you take on g2 and black, the white king moves away, then you just take the queen. Which is, I think, easy to forget about if you're sort of missing yeah. the forest for the trees. Yeah, here black simply wins. <laughs> Wolver2810 <laughs> said, why do these solutions always make you feel so stupid? Hey, <laughs> well, this is hard. I didn't even, I, I didn't in two minutes get to see the stalemate idea yet but i had already started seeing that there was no other solution so i think mm -hmm. with more time maybe i could have found it but it's it's cool how quick you realize that was the only way i mean it's so largely an intuitive judgment because there's a bunch mm -hmm. of candidate moves here that i didn't check that could potentially be the solution for instance mm -hmm. i don't know like moving the rook back and playing queen e1 is an option right and going mm -hmm. queen e5, but all of those moves belong to the same category, and white always responds with bishop d1. So a lot of it, right. I think, is kind of cutting corners intuitively, but that's a lot of what puzzle solving is. Like, you can't really model the situation you get over the board. You do have to kind of cut corners and look for the flashy solutions sometimes. But we can check. I, you, I'm not 100% that sure. Ever, that's one of the things that has a huge difference between puzzles and real games. Because obviously mm -hmm. in puzzles, you know you're trying to solve something. Do you think there's a way that you could study puzzles that's more applicable to actual chess positions? So there's a few things. I think these puzzles are a little bit more realistic because you don't know the evaluation, which is a big mm -hmm. pet peeve. Like if I give a puzzle to a student, they'll often be like, okay, are you trying to win or draw? And you should want positions where you don't know if you're trying to win or draw, because you don't know during a real game yeah. what you want. Um, but some of the Dvoretsky, some of the more complicated Dvoretsky puzzles are so open-ended that you just like don't know, even if you're trying to get an advantage, you don't know if it's a slight advantage or like a winning advantage. Mm -hmm. So for our next session, I have these positions back home in my desktop. Um, I didn't bring them with me. I have some positions from a chess book on evaluation, which are more open-ended. It's not that there are tactics in every one of them. It's like there is a solution. There's a best move, but you have to part of the fun is to evaluate the position and then figure out whether the best move is positional or tactical. So those types of puzzles are hard to come by, but they do exist. On this episode of Having Fun with Danya, <laughs> Danya gives you puzzles and you don't know who wins. Okay, it's been almost three minutes. Okay. Okay, so first generalizations, we're down a pawn. There might be some opportunities for back rank checkmate for white. Uh, there's all these ideas on h2, either taking or queen e5. Our knight is under attack. We need to be careful about trading because we're down a pawn. And if we trade pieces, that's going to make it more likely for white to win. Mm -hmm. So then... I started going through a lot of move options. I looked at queen e5, I looked at bishop takes h2, I looked at queen h5, I think I even looked at knight e5, and initially I thought bishop takes h2 was interesting, but then I looked if king takes h2, queen e5, and even if the king goes back, if I play queen takes, actually I should just play it out, we said we we're gonna That's play great calculation, I, I think that's an important line. 
Um, th this is the line that I realized black is still worse, because if you just trade off everything, there's bishop e3. There's bishop e3 here. And I didn't see how we were going to save this pawn. And mm -hmm. I thought this would be a losing endgame. And I even thought, okay, what about knight takes? Well, there's still bishop e3 here. And I thought, once again, we're just going to end up lo losing a pawn here. It's not super exciting. Right. Um, so that didn't work. The one that I was most looking at was queen e5, which I thought that white's best response was knight f3. Wait, but what about knight takes? What if knight takes c6? Sorry, sorry to cut you off. I, oh, I, I thought knight even, takes c6. Yeah, I didn't even see knight take c6 yet. Okay. Because I had Cause... just come back to this one. But this uh -huh, looks uh -huh. honestly like the move I should have considered first. But but even knight f3 and like, you know, white's up a pawn. So it doesn't feel like black achieves all that much. Yeah, no, I, I mean, exactly. And you can't, that, that's why I had already ruled it out. Because you take mm -hmm. and then queen take. So I didn't mm -hmm. think queen queen e5 was good. But I, I even missed that you could just take the bishop. I had already ruled it out. Uh -huh. um, and then again... I was starting to run a queen h5. I realized you could just move it away. Uh, actually, actually, I don't remember what I had found for queen h5, but I thought even knight f3 was fine. So exactly I what I was thinking that. too. Same. And then now that I had tried all of these forcing moves and I was starting to run out of time, I, I there was also knight takes d4 and things like bishop e5. I don't remember why I didn't like that. And then I was looking just at knight e5 because I couldn't really come up with ideas and at least it was attacking a4. But this is basically where I got to before the time was up, which is gotcha. just... I think I just need more time because these are pretty hard for me. Yeah, and I think I think that's one thing that we can take away. We can definitely, I think, do... We, I, we probably shouldn't be shy about taking, you know, like five minutes or so just because of the format. And this will be a more realistic look into how, you know, good players train. I think there's one other aspect of the position, assuming my move is correct. It Like, I changed my frame of reference completely here because I started with the same thoughts as you, Queen E5, um, Queen H5. I was very tempted by because there's a pretty line here, which is check here, mm -hmm. and then bishop takes h2, wins the queen. So yeah. I was attracted to this, but then I was like, wait a second, knight f3, and it's a complete dead end. But then I asked myself, well, what else could I be missing about this position? I think a lot of times when we miss tactics, it's because in the first couple of seconds, we mm -hmm. convince ourselves that the tactic or the move has to exploit certain features of the position. Here, I think it's the H pawn and the back rank. But yeah. I also noticed that there was some like piece alignment going on in the D file, and the queen on D3 is undefended. The knight on D4 is poorly defended. So like mm -hmm. the moment I paid attention to that set of factors, I thought that I found like the set of two candidate moves which accomplished the same thing, and from which I then chose one move in particular. So I'll let you like ponder that for a second. Well, I'm looking at knight takes D4. Okay. Queen takes. Yeah, queen takes. Um, and then I don't see anything that I love too much. Right. Maybe queen e2, but it doesn't look very good. Okay, so it's not that. Okay, I'm going to think oh. quietly for a second. Take your time. I'm now thinking about things like queen d7 or queen mm -hmm. d8. Uh, they threaten the bishop takes h2 idea, so you can't actually take here. Mm-hmm. So well, they threaten. Look interesting. They threaten something a lot more scary than Bishop takes H2. Like if you play Queen D7, for instance, and White mm -hmm. plays H3, what's the sort of the straightforward winning move? I mean, you could just take the knight. And if White plays Bishop E3 instead, and, and I'm this gonna I think show, I'm going to just show chat really quick. For sure. This is how you for win sure. a queen. Um, and if there's Bishop E3 instead, uh, um, previous move. He... Oh, previous move. Yeah, because this one's. Oh, here, here, here. Instead of h3. Instead of h3. Uh, um, if you play this instead, I guess you just play bishop c5. Yes, and you win a piece. You just win a so, piece. Yeah, I don't see anything better. So then it was a matter of comparing queen d8 and queen d7. And I think this is a very underrated mm -hmm. tool in chess, the method of comparison, where you like go as in as much detail as possible and make as many observations about what separates these two moves and sometimes that leads you directly to the correct move. So my choice was one of them. I'm curious like where your intuition goes between queen d7, queen d8. I think one of those moves allows white to weasel out of the construction. Well, it's funny because if it was a blitz game, you just, I would almost play queen d7 instinctively just because uh -huh. you know it doesn't leave a knight hanging. It seems a lot safer. Is there any difference? So let's say I play queen d8. The knight still can't take because there's yeah. a check. So that doesn't work. Uh, what other options can black, can white defend here? Let's say 
bishop d3, and then I play the same move, bishop c5. Mm -hmm. And what does this change? You can also come at it from the other end, which is that like if you take the moves in a vacuum, what is the physical difference in queen placement? What can you say about how the d7 square differs from the d8 square? Well, the d8 square can be attacked by the white knight. Okay. Um, the d8 square can also be attacked by the bishop because it's a dark square. Um, Hypothetically, yes. But there's also the question of defended versus undefended, right? The d7 square is undefended. The d8 square is defended by the knight. Right. That's true. So when you put the queen on an undefended square, inherently it's more vulnerable. Interesting. So after queen d7, can you spot a defensive resource for white. In fact, I think there are probably several ways to defend here using the undefended nature of the queen on d7. Do I just get out of check? Can I play something like king h1? Then I'll go bishop c5, though. That's true. Okay, so I can't let that happen. Look more closely at the undefended queen on d7. Oh, can I just play queen f5? Exactly. I think you yeah. can. Queen b5, oh. I think, is also possible. Okay, that makes sense. I didn't. I didn't think about those. But that, that that does make... It's obvious once you see it. Yeah, for sure. And that's with a lot of tactics. Now, queen d8, the reason it's correct has actually nothing to do with the fact that this is defended. It's more that white doesn't have an equivalent move with his queen. And so you get out of the radius. The way I find mm -hmm. these is if I was being thorough about queen d7 and trying to find ways that white could defend, as soon as you see queen f5, you're like, oh, easy. I'll just go queen d8. And right. that's usually how I'm able to differentiate between two, two moves. It's when I'm being thorough in the calculations. Yeah, thorough and like certain assumptions I think that you can make, which will block you from finding queen f5, such as, mm -hmm. oh, I can never abandon the knight. I almost never yeah. tell that to myself, like, oh, this type of move is never possible. I, Because it doesn't cost anything to manually check it. Like, I will manually check knight takes c6 one more time yeah. and manually check bishop e3. It takes a lot less to check these simple lines than it seems. And mm -hmm. often it allows you to discover hidden flaws in your calculation. It's like what we saw in the first exercise, right? Where we throw in the move e5 check, and yep. then we have to recalculate the line where we take the rook because then we have that knight maneuver to stop the pawn. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I would say. Yeah, queen d8, I'm pretty sure is the solution. I'm checking. Yeah, queen Yay, d8. it's queen d8. <laughs> Thunderous applause. This is the best, is the best move. And now just gh. <laughs> and black Very is up a piece. Very cute. So I, I guess what I could have done better is here is it, it actually came down to the generalizations where all I was thinking about was down a pawn, you don't want to trade, h2, back rank, but I actually didn't spot this. So I think mm -hmm. I moved a little too quickly from spotting all the general things before actually going into concrete lines. Hmm, interesting. Um, Would you also, somebody did the, keeps asking why bishop b4 doesn't work, but we'll go back there. Bishop b4 immediately? Uh, I think after queen d8, but that's a confusing oh. question. For white? <laughs> yeah, I don't know when they meant bishop b4. Oh, I think maybe they meant bishop b4 here. Uh-huh. I guess there's that... no threat. Because right. even, you know, the funny thing is, even if it was black to move, this is kind of hilarious, but even if white makes a pass move, yeah, like this you, you, is you're just trading. still fine for white. Yeah. I mean, well, queen actually... d2, knight d4, and there's mate, but I think white can survive with knight c6. Yep. It's queen e1, queen f1. <laughs> Almost there. Almost there. But also white can play like knight takes c6 here. Yeah. But okay, sorry, go go back to what you were saying. I was wondering if this idea resonated with you of like, is it true that you might have gotten fixated on the h pawn and the back rank, whereas the moment I think you notice the alignment of pieces, queen d8 becomes an easier move to to, under, to like uncover. It's still not guaranteed, but it gives yeah, you a I, shot at finding it. I think it's also the time pressure where I know I don't have that much time. So mm -hmm. then I spend it on going deeper on some of the ideas that might work instead of looking for new ones. Whereas if, let's say, we had 10 minutes on this, then I would just check all of them. Mm -hmm. I think probably five minutes would be a good happy medium for some of yeah. these more tactical positions. Yeah, five minutes is more fair. <laughs>